What's up guys? Gamer Chunks here back with another uh tutorial. Today I'm going to show you well, what I use for render settings for Sony Vegas in order to get good quality gameplay footage and things like that. Just rendering settings period is it's I think it's good for rendering pretty much anything. So, first off, we're going to start with the project video properties tab. This is something you always need to set up and you should just save it out as a sp specific template. All right, up here, so I have it saved as YouTube HD final. So this is how I set it all up. You always have to make sure you go in and change the format to none per progressive scan for your field order. Um, for 1080p, these are your dimensions for your video, depending on whether or not you're rendering in 1080p or not. But in this day and age, I don't see a reason why not, unless you have really horrible bandwidth or something like that for uploading to YouTube and things like that. But this is the this is pretty much the best quality you can set it to. Um, so if you're using your settings that I used in uh, DX3. And you have the 29.97, you want to add that in here as your frame rate. This has a bunch of different things, but you kind of want to stick with the same frame rate as you do from file to file. It, it creates less degradation of the video. So, stereoscopic 3D, unless you're recording in 3D, turn this off. These here, yeah, I just leave it at one square. Pixel format. This here, I set it to 32 bit floating point full range for the best quality. Now, when you first switch to this, you have to be very careful because as you switch this, this is going to change to uh, one actually linear. And what you're going to end up with if you do that is you're going to end up with really dark video. So as soon as you switch it to full range, you want to make sure you s also switch this to 2.2222 video down here on view transform you don't want any turn it off I mean it's gonna make your video look really strange and it's just gonna change the colors and things like that and I don't see a point in it at all that was one of the things that got me because uh, it doesn't seem like that this option saves out when you save your template I don't know why but this one option in particular doesn't seem to, to to stay. So you always I always have to come in and switch this back to off. Then full resolution rendering quality, always choose best. Motion blur type box. This is again personal preference, this one. You can set you can leave it at Gaussian blur. I prefer to use box. It's really nitpicky this option here, like yeah, it's not going to make much of a difference in your video. Uh, Deinterlace mode, none. So make sure blend fields isn't chosen because I think that's what the default is. Um, this tick box is very important. Make sure it's unticked. Adjust source media to better match project or render settings. You don't want to change anything. You just want everything to like flow like normal. You record it in good quality. You want to keep it that way. And then you can click this, start all projects with new settings, and then click apply. And go OK. So now, what I'm going to actually do is I'll, I'll bring some footage into in here. So, whatever random file, we'll just drop this in. And my computer is chugging along for some reason. Alright, that's weird. I have a pretty good system. Okay, so yeah, we bring in a video. Bring it down here. First thing we're going to do whenever we uh, always say no, because we don't want to adjust the video. First thing we're always going to want to do when we go into and we bring a new video file in, this goes for if you're bringing in multiple clips, you always want to click left click here to select the video track, right click, properties, and always do this. Don't forget, because the thing is, click Disable Resample. So, the reason I say to do that immediately all the time, 
okay, is because um, we don't ever want to do it later because once you've made a bunch of cuts, like say you chop the video here, you chop the video there, you chop it here, you know, you shrink down this area, you bring it over here, uh, you know, you chop it, sometimes you chop it a million times if you're fixing audio, you know. Well, the problem is, is if you don't click it as soon as you import the file, you now will have to go and right click each and every one of these and click disable resample on all the portions. There's a way around it if you really do get stuck and you, you, you messed up and you didn't uh, do this, this thing, uh, this disable resample on the original file. You can go here once you've changed the to disable resample. And then what you do is you right click again after you've changed it so that the properties are set for this one. So then you go copy. And then what you can do is you can take the rest of the files and you can click on one, move to the very last one, sh hold shift, click it again. So you select all the, the video tracks that are, or all the video pieces. And then right click and go paste event attributes and what that'll do is it'll make sure that everything has the same properties so you have to remember how to do that because the thing is is I, I, I saw someone do it one time and I didn't remember exactly what they were doing I knew that they highlighted all the video tracks but as you can see if you video if you highlight all the video tracks and you right click you can't actually access the properties so you can't swap properties on multiple items so the only way around it is to do that copy and paste event attributes. So anyways, yeah, it's a very important thing that you uh, you disable resampling on all your videos. And if someone knows a way to actually have your videos automatic automatically load with um, disable resampling clicked already, I'd like to know. Let me know in the comments because I, I haven't been able to figure it out if it's possible or not. So anyways, yeah. So that's basically uh, you just got to, one thing you got to make sure every time you bring your videos in. So last, we're going to deal with the render settings. So um, what I do is I go in and I choose, let's say here, we'll go... Uh, I, I choose I use main concept so I go main concept internet HD 1080p and then I click customized template so when I go in here I make sure that my proper resolution that I want to render in is selected uh, include video I choose profile main set my frame rate again at 29.97 um, allow source to adjust frame rate so that just means that the uh, it's gonna follow whatever the whatever the uh, source video that you brought in it's gonna follow that frame rate alright so again here select none progressive scan because the other thing is for interlaced videos and we don't want interlaced videos that's what gives us our P in 1080p so uh, pixel aspect ratio 1 that's fine number of reference frames 2 actually maybe it isn't 2 hold on I'm gonna take a quick look at my settings here and yeah 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 okay so we'll go back here customize this template again oh wait a second sorry about this guys okay I actually that was some misinformation there so we're gonna go back through this I I, I, I thought so but alright so the profile we're actually gonna use high and we're going to use non progressive scan and variable bit rate we're going to turn that off we're going to change it to constant bit rate um, then what we're going to do is I find that 
I, I use 28, 28 million because I have pretty good bandwidth, so I don't care if my file gets huge or anything like that. It's not a problem for me. There's not a very big difference. You could you could drop down to 20,000. Uh, you could drop to 14,000 even, and you'll get fairly, or 14 million, and you'll get fairly decent uh, quality video. Even 10 million is pretty good quality. I just find it's a little bit, when there's smoke effects and things like that in your games, it just looks a little bit better with 28 million. But it's nothing that, like, I'm very picky. So, I mean, if you're if you're worried about hard drive space or you're worried about uh, uh, upload speed, then, yeah, you can go with 10 and you're not going to see that much of a difference in quality. But... Again, if you can do it, 28 million seems to be the sweet spot where your video just comes out pretty much like it is in, in your game exactly when you're playing it. So, for encode mode, um, you can use OpenCL. This, I, I, I know that CUDA is for NVIDIA. OpenCL, I don't think it's available necessarily on... Uh, NVIDIA. I think OpenCL is only on uh, AM, AMD cards. So if you have an AMD like a 6950 or a 7970 or a 7990 or whatever, you'd, you'll be able to use this OpenCL and you want to change it to this. So I, I have an AMD card, so I'm, I render with OpenCL. And like I said, if you have an NVIDIA card, render with CUDA if you can. If your if your video card's capable of it, I'm assuming you guys have CUDA capable cards. Seeing as you're rendering videos and stuff, you probably have a pretty decent system. So uh, leave this checked. Don't bother with that. Um, I always go here and I change this to forty eight thousand because I mean forty eight thousand. Unless you're like I don't know superhuman, you can't hear the difference between forty eight thousand and ninety six thousand. I just I don't see the point in going any farther uh, and 192,000 is just a standard rate so bit rate for audio so and make sure that the include audio is clicked go up here change this from AVC to MP4 if it's not already there and this is this here is where you can check whether you're CUDA or OpenCL enabled and if I click it you see I'm OpenCL is available so that's why I can choose that setting. So in reality, what you can do is if you're not sure when you get to this setting, just come over here first, check check your GPU, it'll test and tell you whether or not you can use that option or not, and then go back and change it up on this on the video tab. And project settings, I don't even mess with this. I know a lot of guys say to change this to best. Uh, there's really no reason if you've set everything up the way I have, there's no reason to do it because your project settings are already set at best. So I just I leave that alone and don't bother touching it, and that's it. And then make sure once you've done once you've finished your template and you've made your custom template to come up here, type in awesome template. Sorry, my typing sucks. Uh, awesome template that gamer chunks told me about. Damn it! They restrict you. They don't let you put that many many letters. Anyways, something like that or gamer chunk settings. So you'll always remember me that way. And then click save once you do it. I'm not going to save it because I already have this set and whatever. But, uh, yeah, you just click this button and it'll save it. And then it'll be an option in your menu then from then on. And you won't have to go in and change all these settings again. All right. So, yeah, basically that's uh, the gist of it. That's that's mainly all I do to create my videos and other than my editing and things like that. But those are my render settings. And that's how you get pretty nice uh, quality HD 1080p um, video. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. If it helped you, click the like button. Um, if you want to see more stuff, I'm, I'm going to keep releasing different tutorials for different pieces of software 
And if you have any requests about specific software, let me know in the chat or in the yeah in the comment box down below. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. All right, thanks.